start here with this weekend. Obviously, you ran the, uh, the Xfinity race yesterday, so did Timmy. So, um, yeah. you know, obviously, it just seemed, seemed like a decent race for you guys. But, you know, just overall this weekend, you know, how's it been going uh, for, the, for both Xfinity and Cup? Um, it's been a struggle. Yeah. Um, we've... Uh, we were late putting the car together that Timmy rode, and then uh, it got here, and we were pleasantly surprised that it was pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and then something happened, and, and a rock or something got between the wheel and the brake caliper and mm -hmm. broke the, the line on the brake caliper, mm -hmm. so he didn't have any brakes. Oh, wow. Um, and that's our car we were running for the points, and uh, we felt like we had a maybe close to a 15th place car yesterday, mm -hmm. and, wow. and wasn't able to capitalize on it because mm -hmm. he had a let off of the back straightaway to get through turn three and four with no brakes. Wow. And then the the car that I was running, who really wasn't prepared to run that one for the yeah. entire race. And um, so we did what we had to do with it. But our cup car has been uh, unloaded. It drove pretty well and um, made a few changes to it. But I didn't go in a all-out qualifying setup mm -hmm. because I knew that we're in the race, it was 40 cars, yeah. and I just don't have enough people to, to change from a race setup to a qualifying right. setup and change it back and then run all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so we just kind of qualified on our race setup, mm -hmm. um, and now I've got a whole bunch of room in front of me to let everybody clear out and go through the corner. Right. If they don't make it, that'll be what spot we pick up. Yeah. If they do make it, then we'll ride around and uh, and hopefully have a solid finish. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I believe this is the fifth race for this 66 car this year. So when it comes to, you know, choosing races, which ones you do, which one you don't, you said there's 40 cars. Is that maybe part of why you chose this race or maybe the purse? So, you know, why, why, why have you chosen these five races so far? Well, we've only got one car put together. Yeah. And if I told you I was running Richmond next week, I would have already had to send in the entry last week. Mm -hmm. So at best case, we'll go every two weeks uh, until we get more cars put together, but there's no real use in putting more Chevrolets together as we gotta mm -hmm. change the bodies. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're trying to get a Toyota together, but that's just time and money that mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of. So I'll race this car this week. And after tonight's race, we'll evaluate what we've got and then decide, okay, we can turn it around and we can go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. If I entered it in Richmond and I wreck it tonight, then that means I just lost all of my $5,000 entry money that I sent to NASCAR. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll make sure we have something that we can enter. Right. And if we can do every other week and every other race and, and get by with it and turn it around, then, mm -hmm. then that's what we'll do. Yeah. Obviously, you've been in this game for such a long time, but how tough is it having one car, especially in the Cup Series? Just not, one car to work with. No, it's not tough at all no? if you're not chasing points. Mm -hmm. If you had somebody committed that said you had to chase points and you had to be there every week, our payroll and everything else is pretty much generated um, on the Xfinity side. That's what we're geared up to to race every mm -hmm. week. That's, you know, you have to have cash flow. Right. So um, I've got George Church pretty much looking after the cup car and then the guys from my other shop will go back and forth and help him some, but mainly that's his baby. He mm -hmm. looks after it and um, if we race it once a month or two times a month, I mean, there was races like um, uh, Michigan, Pocono, and even Homestead coming up, um, which I haven't looked at Homestead as well, but it doesn't pay enough money to go down there as a non-chartered car mm -hmm. to even break even. We lose money to go do it. So mm -hmm. if it's races that we lose money, uh, just don't go. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, or, we have to have somebody with uh, with a sponsor on the car. We have yeah. to pick up sponsorship just so um, at the end of the day, what we take in can make payroll and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's one thing I've had as a goal since, um, I guess, 1994 when I first went racing full-time is always to be able to pay our bills. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Yeah. And if we go out and wreck and tear up stuff today and, and scrape it back up, Everybody's paid for. Mm -hmm. I don't owe nobody. And we go on down the road and do our next deal. We may not race any more cup races mm -hmm. for a while, but yeah. but that's just that's how I said it. If it's too many people that come into this racing on this side or the other side and wind up owing every vendor, every mm -hmm. people. There's people that do a bunch of work and, and some people just don't have enough self esteem to pay their bills. Mm -hmm. And I try not to be that guy. Yeah. Why did you choose Chevy? 
for the for the cup car. You said um, obviously Chevy's changing their car for next year. Now, how how has that had an effect on? Like, I'm not sure why you why you chose Chevy for the '66 car, but how would that affect you know the team going forward through next year? You know, with that change. Well, the reason that I chose Chevy is because H. Scott had some for sale okay. at a reasonable rate that I could buy them, mm -hmm. and I can get a season out of them. I would have chose a Toyota. I would have chose a Ford, mm -hmm. but there were none available. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that came available was a Chevy, and I bought it before we even knew if I was uh, going to be cleared to come back into cup racing. Wow. And, um, and we had the opportunity that if NASCAR and I couldn't get to a, a, a conclusion to come back to racing, then I was going to make that an Xfinity car. Wow, interesting. And um, also the charter system. Um, I've spoke to a lot of smaller teams. Um, even BJ McLeod, he wants to move the cup in three to five years. And just how it's, you know, it's really throwing a monkey wrench into everything when it comes to understanding and, and building a team. So you, you must know about that better than anybody because you're one of the smaller teams in, in any series. So, you know, when it comes to the charter system, when they implemented it and now after a year or two, you know, what, what are your thoughts on it and how it's, how it's been helping or possibly hurting, you know, um, one of your teams? Well... <laughs> I, I think that NASCAR needs the charter system for the people who are racing each week to give them s some stability and knowing that you can go sell a sponsor that you're going to be at the racetrack. I think there's possibly too many charters, but I think NASCAR, that number that 36 came up with of knowing that we're going to have at least 36 cars at the racetrack to put on a show for our fans. Mm -hmm. So with that number being said, then I guess that's an okay number. The, the total... 40 cars with the four extras being the the ones on the bubble um i think that the problem there is that the the non-chartered cars just absolutely do not have uh, enough financial backing mm -hmm. uh, the charter cars take too much there's not enough left for non-chartered cars for it to be a deal where anyone would just want to go try. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for Joey Arrington helping me with our engine program, there's no way I could do it. Right. Uh, Joey Arrington is the only reason that I'm able to come and participate even with the car. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think the constant rule changes hurt the smaller teams and help the bigger teams? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Why we, do you think so? Well, the, the big pro problem with that is when we have a rule change, it might take us three full races, two races or something, to get figured out what we need to do. For every action they have, there's always an equal and opposite reaction in a different direction. And by the time we figure it out, okay, this is what we need to do, the other teams have, you know, have gone on and and now there's a new rule change, you, you know, and that's, you know, NASCAR makes one rule and these engineers are these other guys to figure out how to do something different. So, um, and it's it, it always been that way, but sometimes when you have less rules and more open, uh, the garage polices itself uh, because it's such a variety of stuff. But at the same time, you get cars like we had back in 2004 and five that didn't look like street cars. They didn't look like, I mean, you go over and look at one and it got the tail twisted up this way and the body twisted that way and um, uh, just, really didn't make a good looking race car. Mm -hmm. What NASCAR has on a racetrack right now is something you can identify with. When I see a Ford roll through the garage, when I see a Chevrolet or a Dodge, I know that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, you had no clue what it is. It might have been a dirt late model, you know, a wedge body car. Yeah. But um, And I think fans have to realize that and have to look into it, you know. Um, so that's, that's my opinion on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And obviously, cost cutting is such a such a big topic. You know, it always has been, especially for the smaller teams. So, when it comes to you, it's such a million dollar question. You know, what can you do to save costs? But, um, you know, do you have any um, do you have any things that you you wish the sport would do to, to not only help smaller teams but to help the entire sport when it comes to saving costs? Because it's getting obviously so expensive, and we just hear all the stories about everyone struggling with it. So, you know, what are you what are your opinions on cost saving the sport can do? Well, some of the things doesn't need to be adjusted they actually need to be opened up mm -hmm. uh, what people fail to realize is that when you restrict when you cut costs let's say you find a corner to cut somewhere it starts at the top and runs down well where we are over here on this side of the garage 
is everything we buy is pretty much used. Mm-hmm. Well, if you cut cost and stuff, and now the the big teams no longer recycle, sell those parts, mm-hmm. they they wear them out and get gone. It's going to make my cost go up, not down. Right. So, you know, if they run a radiator for a race and get rid of it and they will sell it to us at a huge discount. Now, some of the problems that you have is they call their, the big teams call their items uh, priority or their own spec, and they don't sell their used items, Mm -hmm. which they talk about selling them. They just never happen. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me to cut costs, it's just being able to buy used parts um, from about anybody that will work. But it's like even right now, uh, I can't. I got a Hendrick chassis that we bought from H. Scott that was on a motor program on a whole deal. I can't buy parts for that car because I'm not on their deal. Really? If I wreck it, I'm. I got to start over with something different. Mm-hmm. You know, I got the car complete with the parts on it, but you can't buy the center links. You can't buy um, those parts that are spec pieces that you get from Hendrick because mm-hmm. that's that's their whatever it is so um, yeah other than going back to a street car and bringing it off the factory showroom floor and Mm -hmm. giving you a car or giving you a spec car um, I think that's probably the the only thing can help us I mean tire wise tires and engines are our two biggest costs that we have Um, and then past that it becomes labor your people Mm -hmm. We already keep that part cut down pretty low, mm-hmm. um, but as far as a, a simple solution, it's, uh, is I don't I, I don't think you restrict the big teams as much as you do. You just make them open up mm-hmm. their their throwaway stuff. I mean, yeah. you uh, you take a radiator that they spent ten and twelve thousand dollars for, and they sell it used for three and four hundred. Mm-hmm now they don't sell them they just go to the scrap yard over there and you yeah. get like 10 cents a pound or something for it yeah so yeah do you think um obviously jumping back into the cup series is such a huge move and you talked about how some owners they can ha- they get self-esteem issues and they can really you know tear the whole team down so for you with your experience being being in it as long as you have do you think that this move to cup um uh, for the 66 team was maybe it helped having experience and having knowledge about how this thing works and you got you know some reliable drivers Timmy is one of them so you feel like your experience has helped this transition in the cup as opposed to maybe a team owner who's coming in really quick with a lot of money and they maybe don't know what they're doing uh that's probably a good way to put it uh, you know we we definitely um have to take things at a slow rate yeah. um we, we it's just incredible you know, from buying the electronic dash and the CPUs and all of these high dollar pieces that are in the cars, I've got more money in the electronics in the car than I actually have in the race car itself. <laughs> so, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so, I don't, you know, I don't think jumping into this, I think if you've got any team, if you, if you took Thor Sport mm-hmm. and the guys over in the truck series, if they decided they wanted to go cup after they figured out what you can and can't do and what they needed to be at, they would be as strong as any mid pack team. Mm-hmm. But you've got 36 races a year, week after week in, week out that they got to take care of. So uh, for some people, the truck schedule works out better because there's a weekend off that they can go to the lake with their wife. Yeah. You know, there's um, the cup schedule is a very grueling schedule and when you combine it doing an Xfinity program like we have and this we have no weekends off at all because if I take a weekend off I don't have enough cash flow to cover payroll mm-hmm. so we have to be there every week yeah. and uh, right now I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do when October gets here and we have a couple of weekends off then mm-hmm. um, we had a deal going with, uh, with a Talladega car and that fell through so yeah. Now I'm trying to put a truck deal together to mm-hmm. take one of our drivers there to Talladega. Yeah. And then possibly if we get our second car done, um, then we'll run Martinsville. But until I can get the car finished, I can't promise that we're going to make it to Martinsville. Yeah. That was going to be one of my questions. I believe you said, does the Xfinity Series, when it comes to funding-wise, does that help your Cup Series effort as well? Or those? No. No, no it the biggest okay. thing that it does is the weekends that we don't go Xfinity racing. Mm-hmm. 
there's no money for payroll. So if I go to this track and I spend it, we're getting winnings, which offsets everybody's paycheck. Mm -hmm. And that's, then that's basically, we're just trying to break even. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, if we had a large sponsor and all, I would love to take those weekends off and mm -hmm. go enjoy them with my family. But right, right now, I, my main goal is to make sure that all of my guys get paid, mm -hmm. even if I don't. Yeah. So uh, that's, I think that's the best, best way, the, the best way I can answer that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like anything else. If you worked at a worked on commission or something other and you had to to package 100 brake rotors in a box and that was your mm -hmm. daily work and uh, you decided to take three or four days off well, then people ain't gonna pay you because you didn't do the work yeah it's the same way it is with us here mm -hmm. if we don't show up we don't come to the racetrack and a sad one is like when we do show up and go to a racetrack like Bristol and you miss a race mm -hmm. then I'd say Bristol cost me about twenty five thousand dollars just to go there and try to run the race mm -hmm. and miss it Fortunately, Timmy had a good finish at uh, Indianapolis, and we yeah. had a little cushion there. Mm -hmm. um, but the the winter's coming up, and our cushion's about going away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, do do you get to spend? You talk about family time. Do you do you miss a lot of family time? Yeah. You know, how many off weeks do you have to spend with your family? None. None. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, um, yeah, that's that's the sad part. There's there is none. Mm -hmm. I've, I've missed, you know. I got four kids. They all have involved in something, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm usually missing out on all of it. And then when Homestead is over with in Miami, we'll stay down in Florida. We'll do something down there for a week mm -hmm. through Thanksgiving, and then we'll come back. And and then there's a few weeks that we can make some stuff happen between there and Daytona. But right. for the most part, December is kind of slow, and you spend your weekends Christmas shopping. Mm -hmm. You have your Christmas vacation, and then NASCAR gets all of their rules straightened out. And then what you've just worked on in December, now you usually have to change it mm -hmm. somewhat in January. So it, that's why I see so many people now just basically taking the whole month of December and laying everyone off. Mm -hmm. Because without a solid set of rules, without a solid set, you waste all of that time and labor building a car, getting it ready in December. And then mid-January, you know, January 5th to 10th or something or other, you get an updated rule change for something. Mm -hmm. And so you got to cut it all off and start all over again. Yeah. Is it still worth it? Yeah. What's that? Is it still worth it? Well, the Walmart greeter job don't pay that well. So, <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, I guess it is because I look at what we do and uh, there's several people that have come to me this year to drive that's not been, you know, in the lower levels and moving up. And then, and like I said, you got people like Timmy. So, it's a job for everyone. And... Uh, now the responsibility more to me is not so much the racing, it's not so much the other part, as it is the guys I got working for me mm -hmm. are dependent on me for their paycheck. Yeah. So it's a, a lot bigger responsibility than I imagined it was going mm -hmm. to be. But uh, but as long as we are successful and we can keep doing and we can keep growing and building, um, hopefully next year there's a possibility that Chad Fincham is going to come race for us full time. Mm -hmm. He's working on sponsorship. Ex Xfinity? Yeah. Xfinity. Mm -hmm. He's working on some sponsorship deals to put together. Um, and Bobby Dale Earnhardt is uh, trying to do a couple more races if he can get his stuff. So there's potential for these people to come around. Enrique Baca did a great yeah. job for us. Um, and and he's got some backing, but um, I don't know where he'll wind up at. It's a lot mm -hmm. of pressure when you're driving for Carlos Sims and those guys. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's taking the same path that Daniel Suarez took. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if any of that will wind up with our race team or with not, but um, the problem like um, like Ernie uh, Ernie Francis drove for us, yeah. very talented kid, um, but I think they were a little bit misled in just how different it is from our side of the garage to the other side of the garage, mm -hmm. and um, and so for for us we know that we're not going to be the team that's going to lap the field. Yeah. Um, but I, I look at the Ryan Priest deal. You know, he come and drove a year for Johnny Davis, mm -hmm. had some respectable finishes, did well, and then he had a chance to go over and get in a Gibbs car, which is at a whole new level. Yeah. He got a second and a first. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he would have probably not been able to do any of that 
was out his experience over in Johnny Davis's car. And so there, there's there's room for us in the sport. Just got to have some fun, funding. We don't have to have the 150000 a race that some of the Xfinity guys have. We don't have to have to have the 300000 a race that mm -hmm. the, the cup teams have. But we do have to be able to pay our bills. Yeah. Yeah, you've had a lot of different drivers in, in your Xfinity team. Um, it seems like Timmy is uh, is more committed to the team. Obviously, he's doing the Cup Series and he's doing a lot of team, a lot of races for you. But you have a big lineup of drivers. So when it comes to working with drivers and you know varying experience wise, is is do you kind of want to build their experience? Because you just talked about Ryan. You feel like he was not be he would not be able to win unless he was able to build his career and build his experience with a smaller team. So is that? You know, obviously you're looking for funding and drivers coming in and helping the team that way, but do you want to build their experience and hopefully, you know, propel themselves in the sport while also helping your team? Yeah, I mean, you would hope that their sponsors are going to come along and allow my team to, to get to the same level right. that a Gibbs or something else is. And you, you have to have an association with a big team. Mm -hmm. um, and it all takes a while. I mean, I look at where Johnny Davis was, you know, 10 years ago, and he was, we're way ahead of where he was 10 years ago. Now he's he's doing pretty well and still growing. Mm -hmm. And and that's what you, you just, you want to get to that point of, okay, we've got our own in-house engine program. We've got our own in-house chassis program. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, well, you made it, you know, you're yeah. here. Yeah. But, um, and then there's some people like Ryan Sieg, mm -hmm. they get their engines from Childress, get their cars from Childress, they just, come set them up and they show up and he's a top 12 car most mm -hmm. every week but he don't have a huge investment mm -hmm. in people and equipment um, he just has enough money that he can pay to get good stuff from Childress and a good alliance with their engineers and mm -hmm. and he's a good driver and he's yeah. able to go fast yeah so uh, but but having having Timmy along with us it works out if like today we've got a guy that that came to carry our tires, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me during the pit stops. Well, this guy has an Xfinity license. You can't change tires with an Xfinity license. You had to have a cup license, mm -hmm. and it's a pretty sizable amount for dollars to upgrade. Yeah. So, uh, if nothing changes, Timmy Hill is going to carry my tires today. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and I had to change tires this year at California. So, but but Timmy fills in from a driver coach to a driver to whatever i mean he's a he's a solid part of our team and we're glad to have him here and and then hopefully maybe we can generate sponsorship mm -hmm. to to keep timmy in a car every week yeah um but he realizes you know when when other people bring outside sponsors you got to do what you got to do to have yeah. a have a paycheck and he's yeah. he's definitely a team player yeah absolutely when it comes to the crew members and maybe spotters and crew chiefs you now that's very interesting like he's gonna be possibly doing tires today <laughs> you just raised yesterday so have you have you ever had moments like that before you know when it comes to getting spotters and crew members um we talk about difficulties and everything but as it as something like that is that maybe common does that has that happened before for this team? on yeah what we used to do is before I knew we were in the race when I ran cup years ago I never lined up a pit crew oh. because if you line up a pit crew you have to buy them hotels yeah. plane flights travel to get to the track mm -hmm. and you miss a race you just doubled your expenses with no money coming back in yeah. so we come with our standard crew and, and I usually have enough people to crew our own cars mm -hmm. Bobby Dale Earnhardt has been changing my tires most of the yeah. year well this weekend he couldn't do it um, so he's not here mm -hmm. so we had to fill in the, the void but um yeah it's it's nothing that we're not accustomed to yeah but i've about have enough people on a payroll now doing all that we do that we don't have to go to outside sources for our pit stops mm -hmm. now we're not going to make a 13 second pit stop by no means but uh with the segment racing a, a caution that you can plan on mm -hmm. we can come in and get our tires changed get our car serviced under these segments and and still be competitive right absolutely Jeremy Clemens last week um, he brought so much light to the smaller teams he's been getting a lot of uh, media attention uh, us at Fun Stretch have been covering him this weekend so when it comes to seeing someone like that such a feel-good story for fellow other smaller teams and what was that like for you personally seeing him and that and that team um, be able to actually get a race victory um, just almost out of nowhere I'm just jealous 
That's all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've had occasions where we've thought we've had cars, you know, that, that, that could have been that way. But I'm, I'm happy for him, and we're just jealous for us, yeah. you know, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, obviously, um, just kind of wrapping up the Cup Series here, um, do you, like you say, it's almost week to week, uh, two weeks by two weeks. Um, you said Talladega, Martinsville. Um, any other plans for this uh, 66 car? Maybe you personally, this is your first race since May. So are you going to be racing any more, uh, Timmy? You know, or is it, that just as it comes? It just, we just go and, and figure it out. You know, if uh, Timmy's supposed to race at Chicago and U.S. Chrome, one of his sponsors is going to help him. So as long as we don't tear the car up today, and we can repair it and have it ready to go to Chicago, then he'll probably run Chicago. Um, then there's uh, another Kansas race. I probably would like to do that again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, definitely will not be going to Talladega because mm -hmm. the, the deal went through and that's just a whole different car. Yeah. Uh, so this car wouldn't even be competitive there and you gotta make it on time. Mm -hmm. So there's new, no use in trying. Yeah. Uh, now I have been trying to team up with some other teams and and get a car from them mm -hmm. or, or do whatever that, that they've got something so we just we'll have to see how everybody's mm -hmm. um, financial thing rolls out but basically you can count on us to try to race every other week we'll probably go to go to texas but not go to phoenix mm -hmm. and then try to turn around and go to homestead if that works out afterwards yeah. uh, but only if if the money and sponsorship is lined up to make it work if, yeah. if it doesn't I, I can't just spend this money to go attempt to make a race mm -hmm. money that I don't have. Sure. And final question um, about social media. Like that's one thing that's changed a lot in the sport. Everyone's been, um, they have almost been basking in, in social media and how, you know, the possibility of what you can gain, what you can lose. So when it comes to attracting sponsorship and attracting attention and fans, uh, you know, obviously your team uses it a lot like other teams. Um, when it comes to social media and you personally and how you use it uh, to better the team, you know, what, what are your thoughts on using it and how that's kind of been a change over the last few years. So, you know, what has that change been like for you? Um, I'd say it's very positive for all of us involved in the sport. Mm -hmm. I use it basically because uh, Monday or su Sunday or sometime after the race, mm -hmm. your phone is just blowing up. People calling you, hey man, what happened? We'll just do this. Mm -hmm. Why did that happen? And you, you spend two days answering phone calls about people that are acquaintances mm -hmm. of your team. So now you can just post it on there and then you, when you don't even realize it, it's like when we run the Dodge back out at, um, at Indianapolis and Chad drove it. I had 66,000 people view that, mm -hmm. and it was like, you know, wow. When I came back to racing on Cup, it was only 33,000. Mm -hmm. and, and you look, I never could have reached 33,000 people before. And um, so it's a, it's a tool, and and I just, I try to be honest and post out exactly what goes on, and, and this is who we are. Mm -hmm. And some people have some comments about it, and I don't mind telling them my opinion. I don't yeah. care. And, yeah. It's this is who I am. I'm not. Um, I don't have to answer to any of their stuff. If they don't like the way I run my team, if they don't like the way I do it, then by all means, do your own team, mm -hmm. and you can control ever what you want. You and if you can't do your own team, just this is how I'm going to do mine. <laughs> yeah. And the moments like Indianapolis getting that 14th place, um, I saw you got so much. I did an article on Timmy. I spoke to him after the race article blew up so yeah everyone just loves those smaller team stories so when it comes to Indy and what that 14th place did for the team uh, you said it kind of helped it gave you a little bit of a cushion for the rest of the season so you know just what was that finish like in one of the biggest races of the year um it, very rewarding um we finished the thing over and uh, and Timmy had many opportunities to wreck and he didn't and he kept it all together and so yeah it was it, it allowed us to uh, to purchase a pull down rig and rent the building next door to the one that we have. So um, I'm hoping now that we can, you know, our problems when we show up to the racetrack, we're still chasing our setups because we don't exactly know. And we hope that this pull down rig will allow us to be a lot better set up race car mm -hmm. when we first roll off. And then we can fine tune to being better instead of having to throw big wholesale changes at stuff. And sometimes we hit it and sometimes we don't. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just, it's just a better tool to have in the shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike Hillman had one that he wasn't using anymore. So we were able to buy a used pull down rig. Mm -hmm. And now it's just trying to get somebody to help me with the electric part. Mm -hmm. 
and get it wired up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely appreciate your time. Uh, yeah, yeah no best problem. of luck this weekend. Great conversation. Yes, appreciate sir. it. Thank you. I'll send you, um, when the article's posted, um, I'll probably just send it to you okay. uh, through Facebook. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, thank you again. Work. Yes, sir. You know if uh, Timmy's around? Um, he I know just he's... walked out the door. He's yeah. sitting outside of it. Yeah, I'll have to get a word with him. Is Timmy still outside? I ain't seen him in a few minutes. Okay. See if he's out here. Yeah.